And there comes a giant fish! Oh, no! Before we get into this video, I just want to bring up to you guys that YouTube shows me statistics about the amount of people who are not subscribed to my channel that watch my content. It's a lot of you guys. You guys should subscribe if you like the things that I do, if you like the commentary I make and the discussions I bring up, and please give me your input. Ah, disappointment. We meet again. It's amazing that in a year with so many low points and blunders, that a decidedly mediocre Avengers game is a disappointment, but here we are. Now, my coverage of this game may come as a surprise to you if you're only familiar with the more recent content on my channel, but if you've somehow been around from the beginning, you'd know I am no stranger to critiquing the game industry's handling of the Marvel license. The first video on my channel to see some sort of mild success was a genuinely frustrated rant on the pricing of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite's DLC. I also released a discussion and review video Video on that game as well. My earlier videos focused more on commentary of the games industry as a whole rather than the individual games themselves and were a lot less straightforward than the review style content I do now. I ultimately drifted away from that type of content because, well, I just stopped playing these types of games. And by these types of games, I mean these live service, I guess they're calling them now, titles that try to cram in half-assed multiplayer, that sell cosmetics and gear piecemeal on top of the initial $60 asking price. These games that are riddled with these exploitative microtransactions and loot boxes that only exist to take advantage of fans and pump as much money or time from them as possible. Once I played Mario Odyssey where dozens of Mario's costumes from different eras and games with references to numerous appearances he's made were free and easy to obtain, I realized that developers of games like Destiny, Overwatch, Anthem, and Street Fighter were all just selling me unfinished products at full price and expecting me to pay more for the unfinished product later down the road. For all intents and purposes, I should have avoided Square Enix and Marvel's Avengers like it was the coronavirus. Too, too soon, that might have been too soon. But I'll be honest with you guys, I'm kind of a Marvel shell. I love the Marvel comics movies, lore, TV shows, and a good amount of the Marvel video games. 2018 Spider-Man is one of my favorite games on the PS4. On top of that, I'm actually quite a fan of the developer Crystal Dynamics' work on the Tomb Raider series, and perhaps I was trying to fool myself into thinking that despite all of the live service, battle pass, cosmetic microtransaction bullshit, that underneath there would be a decent or solid Marvel action game. I was wrong. This is a game that my friends and I have jokingly referred to as Marvel's Bavengers for the last few months because of its uncanny and milquetoast character design and how its depictions of these iconic Marvel heroes feels less like an essential cast and more of a B-team. The title feels like it's been stripped away of any meaningful sense of progression in order for that progression to be sold separately. And I hate it. Square Enix and Marvel's Avengers has reawakened my honest disgust with how a lot of big developers and publishers treated beloved IPs in their fan bases. The Avengers game is not good. Lord forgive me, but it's time to go back to the old me. Before we jump into tearing apart this title, I think it's only customary to take a step back and discuss some of the things that I believe this game does well. The Avengers single player story has a number of endearing moments that are honestly well written. The star of the show here is easily Kamala Khan, or Miss Marvel, who is the most well portrayed character in the entire game. At first I thought she looked a little awkward and out of place. A lot of this game seemed to ape the conventions and motifs of the MCU films. Nearly all of the main heroes' attacks, personalities, 
personality traits and actions are obviously drawing primary inspiration from the Avengers movies. Kamala doesn't have any movie or really any major modern or live action representation to draw from, which makes her stand out a bit in the gameplay and animation. Despite this, I think they played at this disadvantage very well. From the start, she presents herself as an awkward Avengers superfan who just obtained her powers and is still figuring out how to utilize her polymorph ability properly. Sure, her moves look lanky and awkward, but it feels intentional in retrospect. On top of this, her enthusiasm and geeky fangirl behavior feels genuine and is a nice foil to the dour and melancholic attitude that the main Avengers cast resonate because of the tone of the plot. She also works fantastically as a proxy for the player. Her knowledge and excitement when traversing the globe with her favorite superheroes matches the enthusiasm any fan would feel if they were put in a similar situation. On top of this, I think that the character progression and customization in gameplay can be quite a lot of fun. Sure, grabbing people with Kamala and chucking them into a bottomless pit or lake may be stupid, but it is hilarious. And the numerous augments to the character's abilities that I received throughout gameplay kept me entertained for the 20 or so hours that I've played around with each of the characters. But that's about the extent that I can praise the Avengers game. It's got some charm, and beneath its awkward combat and unfocused gameplay, there's some gameplay variety that you can have a little bit of fun with. But these glimmers of hope don't save an otherwise dull and insulting experience. This game is unfinished. This game asks you to pay a premium entry fee on top of its many added cosmetic live service fees. It's insulting to anyone who is a fan of the Avengers. I promise to not hold anything back. First, let's discuss the big green elephant in the room. This game is not finished. That's obvious from even an outsider's perspective. In my roughly 20 hour experience, I have come across numerous visual glitches from characters T-posing across the map. Characters' arms and hair phasing through walls, disgusting frame rate dips and screen tearing. There's even this one glitch where Captain America's face melts when wearing a certain armor set. Then there are the game breaking bugs. I've had characters get stuck while floating in midair during the first mission of the game. Oh, that's... I can't move, too. You're going to die. This is... Wow, this game is great. <laughs> <laughs> I've had essential enemies not spawn in, forcing you to restart a fight in order to progress the game. I've even had a few missions that literally crashed my PS4 on completion in situations where I feared that my console was bricked. Fun story, the only mission I wanted to do in this game before I got this review out was the Miss Marvel Chain mission. The only thing I had to do for this mission after completing the main story was gain faction XP with the Inhumans. Every time I did Inhuman faction missions, my game would crash. Every time. This game hated me. Other people have mentioned this, but there are numerous occasions where the subtitles don't match up with what the characters are saying at all. World, I know. We made a mistake, George. Don't call me that. George failed. Modoc won't. We can't cure this. Or what we've become. What are you saying? Power cannot be controlled. I know that now. It has to be destroyed. No. Our sacrifice will be remembered, Captain. And the inability to turn off the closed captions with subtitles on literally results in you getting the whole script to the story, which is both annoying and comical. Beyond the bugs and glitches, this game just lacks in polish or variety in its content. Avengers constantly recycles the same six types of enemies throughout the entire game. There are the normal robots, the flying drones, the flying robots, the robots with shields, the bigger than average robots, and the huge spider robots. Despite this, all of them act the same, and there's really no tactical way to approach any of them in particular. Your combat approaches to all of these enemies will be to run up and mash the square and triangle buttons. Unless you're Kamala, then you just yeet them. I don't understand why the developers would put time and effort into having characters play certain roles with these complex builds when it really isn't reflected in any instance in gameplay. I fought all of the bosses and mobs on the harder difficulties, and each time the encounters end 
in the same way. Everyone gets up to the enemy, mindlessly mashes the attack buttons, and we win. The AI does not act smart. They will not choose to target certain characters. They don't adapt to any particular scenario. All they know is to shoot the player who is closest. There are also only like five types of maps and missions that are constantly recycled throughout the main campaign and the multiplayer. You'll be going into a secret aim base in the desert more times than I can count, and all of them look the exact fucking same. Many of these Avengers Initiative missions are literally just the campaign missions hit with that sweet Control c Control v combo. Like, there are numerous maps that I distinctly remember the layout for, and the puzzles and objectives were the exact fucking same from the main stories. Doing the same 10 missions over and over and over again is not fun. It is repetitive and it is lazy. On top of this, the mission objectives are nearly all the same too. You'll either be taking control of checkpoints so Jarvis can hack into the mainframe, taking out special aim forces, or you'll be freeing captured inhumans from aim's clutches. Also, why are there only like five boss fights and with only three of them being fights with actual supervillains? This game is so woefully lacking in villains or fan service or anything that makes Marvel shit fun. Supervillains will show up once in the story with zero context as a cameo and then just fuck off after that. I'm looking at you Taskmaster and Abomination. Two of the three major fights are just against big generic fucking robots and I hate it. How is it that a game like Spider-Man in 2018 can include such a wide cast of villains and characters in such meaningful ways throughout its story but this game with the literal fucking Avengers barely even acknowledges its wide universe of interesting heroes and villains beyond MODOK and the Scientist Supreme. Just because you show us Nick Fury for two minutes in the opening mission does not make your game better. It doesn't feel like fan service, it makes it seem lazy. While we're at the lack of solid representation of the Marvel IP, let's talk about the actual cast here. The Bavengers themselves. All of these characters are just placed in the story and are written with only their bare minimum personality traits on display for us. It's just enough for us to recognize who they are, but not not enough for us to actually develop any meaningful connection to them. Please, tell me what Captain America does in this game except spout basic platitudes about saving people and exposition on the plot. What does Hulk do in this game except for smash and scream? What does Black Widow do that's not saying horribly written one-liners? What am I doing? I don't even like kids. In comparison, Tony Stark is definitely written like himself here, but the delivery from Nolan North is a little too energetic for my liking. It misses that dry, sarcastic delivery that Robert Downey Jr. has perfected with the character. Iron Man in the comics is an asshole, not a comedian and that's kind of the problem with Nolan North's Iron Man. Thor kind of feels like the character that he's been depicted as in the past, but he is barely around to do or say much that the one or two lines that he actually does say don't really do enough to build him as a character. This game misses what makes the MCU and comic depictions of these iconic characters so lovable. They aren't just their basic personality traits in the media that I love them in. They have complex relationships with one another. They respond in distinct ways to tough scenarios and they learn from them. The problem with making an Avengers game is that the Avengers as a concept revolves around fan service. The thing that makes the MCU and comic versions of the Avengers so impactful to many is that you are able to see each of these heroes develop in their own individual films and comics, you grew attached to these specific versions of Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor because you went on their journeys with them and they use the things that they've learned in their journeys in their time with the Avengers. There not being any sort of pre-existing Marvel video game universe makes it difficult to become attached to these six different heroes who all would normally have complex individual stories to tell. If an Avengers game was going to work, they either needed to have six separate campaigns for each of these heroes, or it should have been released after a series of games connected in one universe. Beyond the bland delivery and lack of any attention to detail, this is another game that insultingly tries to act like it isn't a game that you just spent $60 on as it attempts to leech your wallet by locking away all of the cool character outfits and various cosmetics behind either ludicrous progression gates or paywalls. Take this for example. A legendary outfit typically costs 1400 credits in the shop. The closest interval of credits you can buy with microtransactions is 2000 for $20. $20 
for one outfit? Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Let's just take a step back and acknowledge that most of these outfits are absolute garbage too. They have so many likenesses and comic book variations to create interesting costumes from, but instead they decide that color palette swaps of outfits from the campaign will suffice. Let's take it back to 2018 Spider-Man. That game offered so many free Spider-Man costumes as references and Easter eggs by just playing the game. But you're telling me that the team at Crystal Dynamics wasn't fucked enough to give us interesting costumes as progression-based incentives? Again, it's just lazy. I, I want to take it back to the gameplay here because I don't think I really made it very clear that there is really little to no difference in gameplay between you being level 10 and level 50. When I played something like Destiny, for example, I had a lot of people tell me well, wait when you beat the game. That's when it gets good. That's when the game really starts. This isn't the case at all with the Avengers. You will be doing the same shit when you're level 50 in the multiplayer that you do in the campaign when you first start. And that's beating the shit out of robots and taking hold of checkpoints while fighting robots. And yet Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics want us to continue to play this game for months to come. It's just sad, man. It's sad and it makes me angry that these game publishers and devs just mishandle these beloved IPs so frequently. Instead of creating a finished product with love and care placed into every facet, Marvel's Avengers is a rushed and cobbled together abomination of a game. The Avengers game, it's not good. Well, why are you following the camera around? That's what I don't understand. You got the camera in my face, man. Well, you, you want to be on it, it seems like. I just want to get your opinion for the children. Please, I'm begging you nicely. You take the camera out of my face. Okay, but you're, see, you're how you're following the camera. You see what you're doing? Move the camera away from my face. But you notice how you're moving towards the camera? Can you please move the camera away from the camera? But you see how you, the camera is moving somewhere and you're being attracted towards the camera? Do you notice how your body is, is being magnetically attracted towards the camera that you are verbally attempting to repel? I'm not you notice that? Anything. I'm asking you to turn the camera. But you notice the contradiction. That's a violation of privacy. But let's let's discuss the contradiction. Can you please take the camera away from my face? Well, we're just walking around the park minding our own business. Well, you got the camera in my mouth. But your mouth is faced towards the camera. You're consciously well, choosing. The camera You're consciously making a conscious choice to talk towards the camera. You, see, you notice that? I don't, I don't, I don't Will you turn your face away from my camera, please? please Will you please? I'm asking you. I'm begging you nicely to please turn your face away from my camera. Please don't. 